first of all, usually they're a little bit, what is this? Anyway, why is it out here? And then as you tell them how it was made, how long it took, they're just amazed. And it isn't very long before they, I'll tell them, go ahead and turn a page. And they're turning pages and they go, oh, look at this, or look at this. How, how did they do this? And it's awesome. It's, uh, it's, it's unbelievable what it is. It's a very personal experience to see a work of art. And people sometimes see a book, they sometimes see art, they sometimes see a Bible. People are touched by it, maybe is how I would say that it, it reaches some level of, uh, I don't know if the word is awe, but some, some level that's a little deeper than just the book off the shelf normally. It's a book. We have a library full of books, and it's been an important book throughout history, and that's what we do, is books. Every time I come, I see something new, you know, a, a portion of a drawing that's different, or I didn't notice that that figure was there. One of my favorites is the one right at the beginning of the whole thing, the creation story in seven days, but there are this seven panels for the seven days of creation. We have a picture from the Hubble telescope of the Fertile Crescent. We have reproductions of cave drawings, Aboriginal cave drawings from Australia. So St. John's Bible, it's a Bible yes. first Hebrew. today. It is Hebrew. Hebrew, very good, I'm impressed. <laughs> Librarians do love books and I do. I love them in all their forms, whether they're e-books or physical books. But when I saw these books for the very first time, um, I, couldn't, I couldn't even believe that people had taken that much time and effort to create another Bible. I, and why would they do that? It seemed to me that expression of love for the written word in that kind of physical form was just an expression of, of human art and human endeavor. The St. John's Bible that we have is a fine art copy of the original Bible that is a handwritten, hand-illuminated object of art, of historical significance that's up at St. John's University. The St. John's Bible is a beautiful, monumental work that was written and created by a team of artists and scribes commissioned by St. John's Abbey University. And it took 15 years for this project to, to be completed. The St. John's Bible is 1,127 pages, and you can think of it as 1,127 artworks. Each page truly was an artwork, even if it didn't have a picture or illumination on it. The, the lettering itself is, 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 is remarkable. You know, we didn't do a new translation of the Bible. The words we chose were the NRSV, the New Revised Standard Version, a beautiful translation of the Bible. But we did do a new visual translation of the Bible. St. John's Bible includes over 160 artworks that are really designed to make people stop and think. They are also designed to bring the Bible visually into the modern world, into our visual vernacular. And so, for example, on a page about forgiveness, there's an image of the, the Twin Towers tucked in the corner there, very quietly, but just as, as a reminder to us, can we forgive, really, the unforgivable? And one of my favorite stories is about a little child who was at a gallery looking at our Adam and Eve portrait, and the docent came around, and the child had tears in his eyes. And this little African-American child looked back at her when she asked, what's wrong? And he said, nothing's wrong. It's just the first time I've ever seen an Adam and Eve that look like me. This was the idea of Donald Jackson. It was a dream that he had had since childhood. I mean, think about it. Every calligrapher in the world has at, at some time probably looked at a handwritten work, and most of those handwritten works over the centuries have been scriptural. And so as a young child, Donald said, someday, someday I want to do the equivalent of the Sistine Chapel for a calligrapher, handwrite the Bible. And so that finally in 1995, Donald Jackson asked St. John's, how are you going to mark the millennium? And if I got an idea for you, how would you like to commission me and a team of people to handwrite the Bible the way it would have been done centuries ago, but using a modern translation, but traditional tools? The pages are written on beautiful vellum. 
The inks were made in the 1870s, and they are actually lamp black. Well, this is actually soot, so this would have been candle smoke collected from the 1870s. And these are hand ground, and these beautiful pigments will make sure that these images or these words last for centuries because they won't break down any further. The pages also include beautiful illuminations that use 24 karat gold that will play with the light as, it, as the pages are turned, giving that true sense of the meaning illumination. The St. John's Bible was written with a turkey, swan, or a goose quill. And I'm holding in my hand now just a real simple quill. We often think of seeing the stereotypical quill with all the feathers and stuff on it. This is what quills have looked like for centuries. The artist peeled off the barbs. They heat this to harden it, to clean it up and heat it. And then they, with a, with a, with a simple tool, a pen knife, with a, and a few cuts, they make the most perfect tool for writing. And our principal artist says that this truly becomes an extension of the hand. And you get beautiful, thin, elegant lines like no metal pen can give you. It took on average between 7 to 13 hours for one scribe to write one page. And that's no artwork, that's just the lettering. And it took six calligraphers seven years to write all the words of the Bible. It's just, it's so against everything that culture is about right now. Easy consumerism, use and toss. We've had some complaints from people that this is hard to read, and we say, no, it's not hard to read, it just slows you down which is what you want people to do when they're meditating on these, these images and these words. I was on the committee that worked from St. John's, the Committee on Illuminations and Text. What we wanted was, I sort of describe it as almost like weaving. We wanted the words and the images to sort of do this together so that you get a kind of new meaning. So, for example, in this illustration uh, from the Judges Anthology, the illustration doesn't tell you a story, but it gives you the sense of what's going on. This was a time of huge chaos for the Jewish people during their slavery in Egypt. So the image around the edge has images of Egyptian culture. In the middle are these uh, strange forms that are clashing and, and colliding, and what a it sort of tells you is that this group of people, this nation, the Jewish nation, was not able to come together. It was fragmented when it was outside of its own context, which eventually would be Israel. One of the challenges we have with the St. John's Bible is that there is one. There is one original that does take some care and some, some safekeeping. And we want to be able to share it. And that was the challenge. How do we share this work of art and make it available to people? So St. John's embarked several years ago on a project to recreate it in a fine art edition. And that fine art reproduction recreates the pages of the Bible in almost every detail except they're printed on paper. It's a, it's a very high-end, fine art, museum quality, lithograph copy of the St. John's Bible. And we made 299 sets. And so the Austin Public Library was gifted by a generous donor a full-size copy of the St. John's Bible. Seeing the Heritage Edition is as close as you're going to get to seeing the real thing. One of the things that really convinced me that we could be a home to these books was that the donor felt very strongly that in a hundred years, if the books were pristine, he would have wasted his money. He felt very strongly that the books should be used, they should be examined, that they should interact with people. And I think that a public library, and especially a small public library, is perfectly suited to that. Some of that magic from the first original volume seems to rub off in this book. It's big, the pages feel different. I think the significance of it is the fact that the Bible is communal. This beautiful work invites us to come together with others, to share it, to make it a truly communal piece. Whether this is the foundation of your belief system, it's still an amazing example of how someone who does believe sees the relationship of the word and the image. Is it a work of art? It's a true work of art.